Thank you for choosing Mobile X as your X-ray solution. The purpose of this video is to teach you how to operate Mobile X and to show you the techniques that will ensure the safe use of Mobile X for you, your patients, and for the public. The successful completion of this training is required before use of the Mobile X. In addition to completing this training package, we recommend that you study the manual in its entirety before operating the Mobile X. There is a soft copy of the manual provided on the USB memory card delivered with the product. You can also access the manual online at DentEnterpriseInternational.com. As the operator, it is your responsibility to ensure the proper and safe use of Mobile X. After completing the training, we strongly encourage you to take the operator training test included in the training materials. Please study the materials until you can answer all the test questions correctly. Please note, this training material is not intended to replace basic radiation training. This is supplemental material for Mobile X operators presented under the assumption that operators already have basic radiation safety training. You must also be aware of any local jurisdiction requirements pertaining to the use of the Mobile X. Now let's get started. Anytime you see this symbol as an indication, there is an associated hands-on exercise, and you will need to pause the video. First, let's charge the battery. Open the rubber cover on the back of Mobile X and connect the charger jack to the system. Plug the battery charger into an electrical outlet. While the battery is charging, a red light will illuminate on the charger. Note, X-ray exposure is not available while the battery is charging. When the battery is fully charged, a green light will illuminate on the battery charger and the battery power level icon of the LCD screen on the top of the system will display three bars. This should take less than three hours. If you have not charged the battery, please pause the video now and continue when you're ready. Now let's take a look at the major components of Mobile X. First, the system body. Second, a fixed collimator cone. Third, a fixed backscatter shield. Fourth, the X-ray exposure button. And fifth, the X-ray exposure lamp. On the reverse, we can see first the battery cover, and second, the battery charger connection port. On the bottom, we see a connection screw for an optional arm, tripod, or pistol grip. On the top, we see the control panel and display. First, the LCD display window, which shows the current exposure time, the mode or patient body type, the voltage and amperage. Second, we see the mode and time control buttons. Third, the exposure status lamp. And fourth, the power button, on or off. Press and hold the power button until the display shows ready. The display panel will light up and you'll see a battery power level at the top center of the screen. Three bars is an indication of a fully charged battery. If the battery charge is too low, Mobile X will not emit an X-ray. When the battery level is depleted to a single bar, we recommend the battery be recharged. On screen, you will also see the word mode or time, the selected patient mode or body type, the selected exposure time in hundredths of a second, X-ray voltage and amperage. To select exposure mode, adult, child, or pregnant woman, use the up or down arrows. The system will display the corresponding selected exposure mode. Notice the exposure time changes to accommodate people of different sizes. To change between setting exposure mode or time, press the up or down arrows simultaneously. The system changes between mode and time. Now to change the exposure time directly, press the up and down arrows. The 
you can see the exposure time is changed. To save this exposure time in system memory for the selected mode, press the up and down arrows simultaneously. The system goes back to mode setting. If you power down and restart the system, it will return to this state. Pause the video now and continue after you have practiced programming the exposure time. We will now demonstrate how to position the patient. The most important thing to remember is to adjust the position of the patient for each x-ray view rather than the x-ray device. This keeps the backscatter shield parallel to the operator, allowing the operator to stay in the protection zone. If you need to use a sensor or film holder, we recommend you use one with a short bar that allows the backscatter shield to remain at the outer end of the cone. For anterior PAs, you will tilt the patient's head either up or down in order to x-ray the roots properly. Remember these important principles. Adjust the patient so that the backscatter shield is parallel to the operator, and so that the backscatter shield is at the end of the collimator cone and next to the patient. You may want to practice positioning the x-ray for each angle now. To review correct positioning, we require the end of the collimator to be close to the patient and the backscatter shield parallel to the operator's body. Common positioning errors may include aiming the collimator up, exposing the operator's head, aiming the collimator down, exposing the operator's lower body, removing the collimator backscatter shield, which exposes the operator's head and lower body, or holding the collimator too far back from the patient. This reduces the amount of radiation received by the dental x-ray sensor. The factory settings of the x-ray are intended as a starting point. The time settings can be adjusted and saved to meet your preferences. In deciding on the appropriate time settings, remember the ALARA principle, or as low as reasonably achievable. This means to set the exposure time as low as possible while still achieving an appropriate diagnostic exposure. There are several factors to consider when choosing an exposure time. Consider the image density preference, clinical quality preference, the various imaging sensors and film speeds available, patient size and practitioner techniques. Adjust the technique factor time settings as demonstrated previously. In summary, remember to follow these important guidelines when operating the Mobile X. Number one, only trained operators should be allowed to use Mobile X. In some locations, training is required before using this device. 2. Review the Mobile X Operator Manual in its entirety. It provides an overview of all the training and can be used as a quick reference in your office. 3. Follow all safety recommendations. 4. Stay in the safe protection zone for maximum protection. 5. Sight through the backscatter shield, not over or around it, to keep yourself in the protection zone. 6. If you're not able to stay in the protection zone, you should wear protective clothing. Some locations have specific rules on what to wear. 7. Secure the Mobile X when not in use. 8. 
follow all rules established for radiation safety by your local jurisdiction. 9. If you haven't yet registered your Mobile X with the appropriate, with the appropriate radiation agency, please do so now. As a reminder, we encourage you to take the learning reinforcement exam included in the user manual. Please study the materials and take the exam as many times as you need to answer all the questions correctly and to ensure complete understanding. Once you have successfully completed the exam, you can print the training certificate included in the user manual. We recommend that the certificate be signed by your supervisor and kept on file along with your exam. Congratulations, you have now completed the video training for MobileX.